Hey everyone! So last time we talked about what translation is and why it's complicated. Today I'd like to sort of bring it around and discuss translation in terms of another persistent course theme, and that is the representation of identity. Now, on the one hand, translation and identity seem like they have nothing in common with each other. But as a matter of fact, they do share a lot of concerns. I'll start with what is commonly called the Saper-Whorf hypothesis. Now, this has nothing to do with Star Trek, despite this being a sci-fi class. In fact, many linguists and sociologists actually criticized the name because, though Worf was a student of Sapers, they never actually wrote or published together. The Saper-Whorf hypothesis describes a concept now more commonly called linguistic relativity. Linguistic relativity holds that the structure of a language affects the way its speakers or readers conceive the world around them and make sense of their experiences. The Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy puts it this way, quote, Each language embodies a worldview, with quite different languages embodying quite different worldviews, so that the speakers of different languages think about the world in quite different ways. Now, there are many different varieties of this theory. Different scholars debate the scope and limitations of the kinds of effects languages can have on an individual's mind. However, few argue with the underlying idea that the ability to conceive and make sense of an object or experience draws upon the language through which we conceive it. This includes the way we think and conceive of the self. In his book, Translation and Identity, Michael Cronin writes, Though the notion of the autonomous self has been largely privileged in Western thought, it is difficult to see how we can define ourselves except in relation to what we are not. If everything is the same, there is no difference, and if there is not difference, there is no identity. Consequently, difference is essential to the construction of identity. Later, he specifies that the same tension between difference and connectedness is key to translation as well. If translation is proverbially a bridge-building exercise, and much is said about how it bridges gaps between cultures, it must not be forgotten that translation has as much interest in distinctness as it does in connectedness. So to sum up and connect Cronin and linguistic relativity, we form our identities and our understanding of identity as much in relation to who we are not as in relation to who we are. Therefore, identity requires a broad network of differences. If I am exactly the same as you, then why does it matter who I am? Identity is meaningless. Now, language affects the way we understand the world around us and therefore necessarily affects the way we understand identity. Linguistic difference, which is discovered via the practice of translation, not only reveals are the connections between ourselves and the world around us, but also highlights the very difference that allows identity to exist in the first place. Frankly, I would argue that all communication is in some way or another a form of translation. Even when we speak the same language, our meanings, intentions, experiences, and backgrounds subtly shift the way we use and understand language. We've all had the experience of talking to someone who speaks the same language as we do, but not being able to say what we mean or having the person not quite understand what we mean. As such, I would also argue that translation is a kind of performance, though it might be more accurate to say that performance of our identity is a kind of translation. Butler argues there is no essential gender or identity that we perform. These come into existence through the act of performing them. These performative acts become sedimented and through their buildup create some seemingly stable notion of identity. However, though identity is not pre-existing, a performance does not spring into existence out of nothingness. Performative acts are a way of translating the invisible, immaterial, indescribable ideas and concepts that shape us, cultural expectation, personal feelings, social history, into reality, whether it be through an action, a way of talking, a way of dressing, whatever. The concept of translation, therefore, is not only important to texts in translation. It's a really useful way of understanding communication and identity more broadly. and will be very important to our two upcoming texts. In Octavia Butler's short story, Speech Sounds, she imagines a world in which humans have lost the ability to communicate in any linguistic sense. And yet, somehow, translation is more important than ever. The novel Solaris is in translation, and that's important to remember. But translation, or the inability to translate, is at the heart of the novel. How do we communicate with a being we don't understand? How can we understand a being we can't communicate with? And what does that kind of encounter do to us? 
See you next time.